Hey guys, this is Mark Hutton with adultaspergerschat.com and today I want to look at executive functions deficits and how they may impact the relationship. So if you're a neurotypical partner and you are married to someone on the autism spectrum, you have no doubt run into some things that really fall under the category of executive function deficits but you may have perceived it as he's just being rude, insensitive, uncaring, selfish, narcissistic, self-absorbed, and so on. So some of these things do look like inappropriate behavior, but what's really going on is, is the way that the ASD individual's brain is wired and some of these things he has little control over. The first executive function is abstract thinking. Now this is being able to understand non-literal language, for example, sarcasm, jokes, metaphors, and so on. It's also the ability to understand nonverbal communication, and that would be the way we get our message across apart from the words we use. Tone of voice, volume of voice, body language, facial gestures, and so on. So one example of abstract thinking deficit would be, let's say you, the NT partner, were purposely being sarcastic when you were talking to your ASD partner, and uh, you thought it was obvious that you were being sarcastic, but he didn't get it, and he took you literally. Another example would be, um, let's say that you're upset with him over something, and to a typical person, it would be very clear that you're upset. Your facial cues, your body language, your volume and tone of voice conveys that you are upset and even disgusted. But when you talk to your husband in that state of mind, he doesn't realize that uh, that's any different than talking about the weather. He's not picking up on your facial cues and uh, some of the other things that would uh, indicate to most people that you're upset. And uh, he just that's just a neutral conversation in his mind. So another executive function is called emotional control. And this is the ability to control escalating emotions in order to complete a task and to keep emotions to a level that's appropriate. So I'm sure a lot of NT spouses out there have run into this one. If your ASD partner has a deficit in this area, then you have witnessed meltdowns, shutdowns, adult temper tantrums, and behavior that just in general was out of control and disproportionate to the actual event that was going on. So, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being a terrible problem and one being no problem, he responds to a level three problem as if it were a level nine or 10. So the next executive function we'll look at is called inhibition. And that's the ability to contain the desire to do something in order to stay on task until it's finished. For example, uh, staying focused long enough to complete a project, thinking through problem solving, staying on the topic and avoiding going off on tangents. So an example of an inhibition deficit would be, let's say that you are uh, talking to your uh, ASD partner about topic one and you've made your delivery that lasted a couple minutes and now you stop talking and you're waiting for him to respond and he responds with topic B has nothing to do with what you just said. So you get the indication that A, he didn't hear what I said, and B, this whole time he's more concerned about what's going on in his mind than what's going on in my mind. So, you know, you're talking about topic A. When you're done talking, he shifts the conversation to a completely different topic. The next executive function is initiating, and this is getting started on a task. For example, knowing where to start, what to do next, and so on. So with the ASD brain, the logical part of the brain is overly developed, and so that's an overthinking brain. In other words, they get stuck on a particular thought, and they can't move forward from the thinking process or the planning process to the action phase. It's not uncommon for the AS individual to want to have all of his ducks perfectly in a row before he moves forward. And so since he is very perfectionistic, and since it's very difficult to do anything perfectly, often the result is he procrastinates. He will say, if I can't do this perfectly, I'm not going to do it at all. And if there is some process that involves five different steps, he will tend to get stuck on the first or second step during the planning phase and then fail to complete the task or the project. 
The next executive function is multitasking. That kind of speaks for itself. That is the ability to carry out more than one cognitive process at a time. For example, being able to perform a task while talking. And so if you've ever tried to have a discussion with your ASD partner while he was in the middle of playing a computer game or something, when you talked to him about something that was important to you, it most likely didn't go in one ear and out the other. It never went in the one ear. The next executive function is planning and organizing. This is the ability to plan and organize time, information, and procedures efficiently. For example, carrying out instructions accurately, completing tasks on time and correctly, and so on. So with this one, remember that people on the autism spectrum are visual learners in a verbal world. And so if you've ever given your ASD partner a fairly lengthy uh, list of things to do, or you've uh, tried to describe something that had multiple steps and he couldn't paraphrase back what you just said because he didn't really get it, it's because he had data overload. In other words, there was just too many bits of information for him to be able to retain at one time. And next we have self-monitoring. This is being mindful. It's recognizing when a change is needed and it's noticing when an error occurs. For example, staying on a topic when talking, noticing changes of topics in groups, answering questions accurately, noticing when you have made a mistake, being relatively accurate in your judgment of your own and others' behavior. So with this self-monitoring deficit, what goes on here is basically the mind blindness problem where I don't know how my behavior impacts others and also I don't understand your side of things. I don't understand why you say and do the things that you do. Shifting focus is another executive function and this is the ability to shift attention if something changes. For example, being able to change how something is being done when asked being able to see multiple possible solutions to a problem. So if you're in a relationship with an ASD partner, you have probably found out that he does not like change and he does not like surprises. And if he was busy doing something and you come in and interrupt him because you need him to do something else, you've probably noticed he had a hard time shifting from task A to task B. And lastly, we have working memory. Now this is the ability to hold on to information in order to process it. For example, being able to identify the main point, being able to take all information into account, uh, being able to tell a cohesive story in a logical sequence, um, following instructions, reading comprehension, all of these things have to do with working memory. So an example of a working memory deficit would be, let's say that you have given your ASD partner some instructions, you needed him to, to do something and complete a particular task, and he gives you the indication that he both listened and understood you, but you find out eventually that he really didn't because he simply didn't follow through. So these are the nine different executive functions, and it is not uncommon for the ASD individual who has a deficit in one or more of these areas to be viewed by his partner as neglectful, irresponsible, lazy, and so on. So a lot of times these deficits do get misinterpreted. In other words, they may be viewed as behavior that was intentionally malicious, 